Hello everyone. Tonight's class is debate. We'll get started shortly, within about one minute, when students arrive in the class. We're going to talk about what a debate is. We'll spend the first 20 minutes or 30 minutes talking about what makes up a debate, what is expected out of a debate, and then we'll talk about this week's debate topic. Do video games contribute to youth violence? Again, we'll start in a few minutes. Once everybody arrives in the class, class fills up usually within a minute. Hello, Renee. Oh, hi, Sam. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. How are you? Well, I'm okay. Oh, you're not good. You're okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. All right. What? Do you disagree? Do you think I'm not okay? No, no. For me, it's. Would a little more than okay. Would you like to argue? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That. <laughs> All right. So, Renee, welcome to class, to our debate class. I see Raphael is here too. Hello, Raphael. Hello, teacher. How are, how are you this evening? I'm fine. And you? I'm very well, thanks. Glad you could make it. I'm just going around doing introductions, seeing who is here. And I see we have Marosio. Uh, no, that, I didn't say that right. Mar, Marosinio. Could you say your name, please? I'm just not, I'm, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Marosinio, can you hear me? Okay, maybe not. Maybe I said your name too wrong, you don't want to talk to me now. Catherine, hello, Catherine. Hi. How are you? Um, a little bit tired. Oh, that's too bad. Where are you from, Catherine? Uh, I'm from Peru. Oh, so it's like uh, 11 o'clock, isn't it? No, it's it's 8. Oh, okay, eight same time zone. Same time zone as me then, yeah. so that's not too bad. No, it's okay. not. Well, great. Welcome to class. Thank you. Elmer, hello. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a long while, Simon. Well, welcome back to class. I'm glad you could join us. I am going to go over what a debate is, only this time I'm going to add a bit more information for you guys. So we'll do that shortly. Uh, and Edward. Hello, Edward. Hi, buddy. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Where's Edward from? Hey, did you forget about me? Where, wow. where is Edward from? Look at my face. You should know. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at your face doesn't tell me where you're from unless you have a tattoo of your country on your forehead. <laughs> yeah, but I, I told you the last time. You asked me. I, I'm, I'm being in your class many times. And you yes. told me you. Yeah, and you told me you should. I, you told me I should be in your class because, and you did in your debate class. Right, but my memory isn't always the best, so I would guess Brazil. No. <laughs> but it, I, it, it, I, I okay. say I would guess Brazil, but probably that you're Dominican. Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. I'm guess. glad we got that straight, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. You normally, I'm pretty good at guessing um, where people are from or p remembering, but not always. Sometimes my memory is bad, but I do remember most of the time. Okay, it's normal. You have a lot of students. I, I I teach. Oh, I see at least forty students a day. Yeah, but you know what? I remember where you're from. You're from. I remember where you're from. You're from Canada. I live, currently <laughs> live in Toronto. 
which is, yes, in Canada, in a very, very cold place right now. Okay. Yes. I don't forget, my. So, no, I won't forget. And beside you is Camilla. Hello, Camilla. Hello, how are you? Very good. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> you laugh, but actually you Chinese too. New Year is coming up this weekend. Ah, that's true. The Chinese New Year is true. Yeah, so... I heard the news, the news today, yeah. something about that. Yeah, and I believe it's called the Year of Simon. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's my you year. Wish. <laughs> you wish. You wish. <laughs> Hope it is. <laughs> In my world, it's always about me. No, not, not the fish, Renee, not the fish. Oh. <laughs> so I want to welcome everybody. We're going to talk about debate. Some of you, Renee inclusive, have heard this before, or you think you have. My normal presentation about debate is a little different. And here's what we're going to do today. Here's the agenda. So we first of all, we did introductions. And if you haven't guessed already, I am your teacher for this evening. I teach debate Monday and Thursday every week at the same time. The Monday night debate class is more lecture based. You will get a chance to participate, but I always like to refresh students on what a debate is. We can have fun, but it's important that we know why and what we're doing. So then what I'm going to get into soon is the lecture. And then the last part of the class, we debate. Or we talk about debate topics. Consider it a round table. Round table means we go around the table or the class and we talk about the debate topic. We talk about how we might debate the topic or research the topic. So let's start off. So what is a debate? Well, this is a good question to ask you guys. Renee, I'll ask you to be quiet on this one because I know you know the answer. Can anybody tell me what a debate is? Or what a debate isn't? Excellent. <laughs> You're shy, so I'm going to help break you out of your shyness. Raphael, what, what do you think a debate is? A debate is a discussion of ideas and different yeah. points of view, even though we have to respect each other. Oops. Uh, I accidentally muted the wrong person. Sorry. Alma, could, no problem. could you? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little trigger happy. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Okay. So, in a debate, you must respect each other's point of view and opinions because, you know, uh, the goal in a debate is not to prove who's wrong or correct. Mm. Is to, yeah. That maybe. Maybe. Well, well, I tell you what, let's start off with what a debate isn't, okay? A debate is not a persuasion of your opponent, okay? So we have, let me remove the agenda. You might want to write down these words too because they are important. You have to persuade the public. You're right. We have to persuade a third. We'll call it a third party, right? Third party. Yeah. Might be the public, might be the audience, or what about this? In the case of a court, it might be the judge or jury. So we have two positions. We have the affirmative, and we have the negative. Okay, so we have two positions. And of course, we have the audience. 
I cannot spell tonight. Oh, I'll, I'll just put a period there. Audience. But a debate is confrontational. That's its very nature. Okay? It is confrontational. But again, you're not trying to convince or persuade the negative position. Or if you're on the negative, you're not trying to convince the affirmative. You're generally speaking to the audience. You're trying to convince them. So what is your purpose? What are you trying to do in the debate? Are you strictly trying to win? Score to essentially score points? Feel good about yourself? Ha ha. I got him there. <laughs> ha ha. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to get people to think you're very smart? <laughs> Look at me. That's right. <laughs> I'm king. Or are you just trying to make people angry and upset because you like making people feel that way? Well, some people enjoy debate for that. It's a challenge. Or are you trying to persuade? Are you trying to appeal to an audience? Uh, sorry, to the audience. Okay. Okay. And that's you, you got to think of what is your purpose? What are you trying to do in the debate? You try now, to persuade the audience. Yes. Now, if you're on the affirmative, you pretty well own the topic, right? So, for example, with a debate topic, video game violence contributes to, or sorry, video Bob. games contribute to youth contribute violence. To yeah. That's the affirmative discussion, essentially. So. They're all about proving that that is correct, and the, the negative side will says, well, wait a minute here. No, that's not true. And the negative will try to say, sorry, let me finish, then I'll let you have a word. And the negative will try to say, well, wait a minute, well, what do you mean by youth violence? Okay, what do you mean video games? What video games? You might try to get more clarification of what they're trying to tell you, you know. Okay, video game violence, all video games? Are you saying video games are inherently evil? No. In fact, my friends are playing football. They are pretty tiny. Oh, well, well, we're not arguing right now, Jessica. We're just talking about from a debate point of view, right? So we'll get into evidence later. But the negative, all the negative is trying to do is clarify the argument and poke holes in it. All right? But all the time that you're debating each other, you're trying to convince that audience. So if you act like, ha, 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 look at me, and try to make your opponent feel small, well, your audience might think you're arrogant, a know-it-all. They might have a bad viewpoint on you. They might have a, view, a bad outlook on you. This could work against you, so be careful. Come across as reasonable. So in a debate, there's a lot of research done ahead of time. When you get to the debate, you have your speaking points. You've prepared your information ahead of time. You have probably researched both the affirmative and the negative. Has anybody ever heard the saying, know your enemy better than yourself? Yes. Or know yes. your enemy better than your friends? Yeah. I yeah. listened to this, this phrase in a, in a book called The Art of War. Uh, Sun Tzu. Yeah. Yeah, it's the a Chinese uh, general. Exactly. Yeah. Know it well. So if you're going to argue your position, know the negative side. Know what they can bring up so you can refute what they say. Okay, it's very important to be able to refute in the rebuttal. But when you're not speaking, what should you be doing? Jessica, listening. if you're Yeah, listening. Paying attention carefully. Thank you, Jessica. Very good. Sorry, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's okay. I just want to give everybody a chance. Okay, so you're listening then. What are you doing while you're listening? Let's ask Jessica this time. If you're listening, what are you doing? Okay, let me ask somebody else then. Octavio, if you're listening in a debate, are you just listening? No, I'm thinking about the subject. Yeah, excellent. You're thinking. You're trying yeah. to understand. Well, you're, you're understanding. Exactly, yes. You're taking notes. Exactly. Now, if I'm debating, is it okay for the affirmative to interrupt me? No. No. Very rude. Very bad. Yes. Yes. And if you're in court, and guys, think about it. If you're in a trial, that's essentially one long debate. You have your opening statements, your closing statements, and then a series of rebuttals where one side tries to refute the other. The prosecution tries to prove its case, and the defense says, no, you're wrong. I refute your claims. So yes, you want to understand, write it down, and then when it's your turn, you appeal. Yes. OK? So these are all very important words. And don't worry, every Monday I go over the same information again. So. We talked about this earlier, and Elmo was very good to read or give his opinion to us. So let me now tell you what a debate is. A debate is a controlled argument in which one person or team attempts, hopefully very well, to persuade the audience, which may be a judge or jury, that he has the correct idea or position over the other team. We use persuasive speeches or constructive speeches, cross-examinations, and rebuttals. So construct constructive speeches, cross-examinations, and rebuttals. This is some of the new information, Renee, and we'll cover this in a little bit. Cross, cross examination. examination. Yep. And rebuttal. Okay. So, what is a constructive speech? Well, constructive speeches introduces arguments. Oh, have a debate with classes. Uh, every kind of debate, I think. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're uh, what point you're trying to get across, Jessica. Oh, when, when we have a debate, teacher, we, we we have a lot of kind of we have a lot of kind of conversation. And what what yes. the people disagree? I think that, but I don't know what. <laughs> well, that's what I'm going over now, so you might want to write this down. So under constructive speeches, first point is we introduce an argument. Yes. Okay, Thank so you. what is an argument? Well, an argument is where we attempt to persuade someone of something. We attempt to persuade someone or something. And we do this by giving evidence. We must give reasons or evidence. Renee. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know you don't like the heat, so come to Canada. Trust me, you'll love it. Mm. Have I given you any evidence? No. Did I give you a reason? Yeah, I just said that it's yeah. not hot, but... Now, if I said, Renee, I know you don't like the cold, you should consider coming to Canada. In the summers, it's nice and hot, as it is in Mexico. Temperatures reaching up to and going over 30 degrees Celsius. However, in the winter, 
it can get as cold as minus 40 in the central part of the country, but if you go to the west coast, it doesn't get much colder than about zero degrees. Done. Yeah, evidence. <laughs> evidence. This is very, very important. So again, under constructive speeches, evidence is very, very important for accepting a particular conclusion. To be able to persuade somebody, evidence helps. But also to come across in a trusting way. Cite trusting sources. Okay, so let's go back to our terms. The first constructive speech is called the affirmative. All right? It introduces the topic being debated. What is the topic for tonight's debate? Anyone? Video gaming contribute to youth, youth violence. Very good. We call this, here's another word, these are important because we're going to use these new words a lot. We call this the resolution. Resolution. Okay. okay. So, the debate topic is called the resolution. What is the resolution for tonight, Renee? Is he still in the class? He's yes, yes, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes a little bit to unmute me. Um, resolution, I don't know, 100 prayer. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Resolution, it's um, the end of the argument? No, it's the debate topic, the topic being debated. Oh. This is what happens when you pass notes in class. Yeah. <laughs> Juan Carlos, you're being a bad student. You're distracting Rene. He's easily distracted. All I have to do is look, Rene, something shiny. <laughs> Rene's one of my. Uh, well, I think Renee's been with my with me at Kalingo since I started teaching. <laughs> so this is very important. I'm gonna speak slowly. And I want you to listen to what I'm gonna say here and then I'll have you write it down. The affirmative defines the terms of the debate. Okay? It is really up to the affirmative to define the terms of the debate. The affirmative in a way has control. If the affirmative is not smart enough, they can lose that control. So let me just say again, the affirmative define the terms of the debate. Yeah. And some of my other points here, I'm going to give them to you in the chat area. I think it's very important. This is all about constructive speeches. Okay? So, to review a little bit, what is the first constructive speech called? I'm sorry, say that again? Camilla, what is the first constructive speech in a debate? The first constructive I don't know. Affirmative. Ah, this is the affirmative, yeah. Yeah. The, okay, the, so what is the second? The theme of the debate. No, it's not the theme, it's the affirmative. So the what theme. is the second? Resolution. <coughs> no, that's the debate topic. What is the second constructive speech? Negative. Yeah, it's the negative. The negative. So here we go, I'll use red. First, second, constructive debate. Or sorry, constructive speech. All right? Yeah. Here we go. So the second constructive speech is called the negative speech. What is the purpose of the negative speech? We talked about this a little bit at the beginning. <laughs> but the purpose, I'll read this to you, the purpose of a negative 
constructive is to refute pretty well whatever the affirmative says. So you want to refute the arguments put forward by the affirmative. Okay? You also want to try and anticipate what the affirmative might say. Because again, it's like sorry. Refute to like deny the affirmative. Refuting the affirmative means like denying the, the affirmative. Yeah, providing evidence to support a contrary position. So the affirmative is video games contribute to youth violence. If I was on the negative, I would say, well, there are several studies, one by Columbia University. Uh, one by Pennsylvania University and also another study done in Canada that show video games can help reduce pain by 90% in burn victims when their bandages are being treated. Does that sound like it contributes to violence? No. Well, there you go. So I have refuted something that the affirmative has said. Well, Elmers, we're not talking about ordinal numbers right now, so let's save that one for later. I'm just going to worry about debate topics right now, unless you want to have a debate on ordinal, nu ordinal numbers. So if the one thing you want to remember about the negative provide an opposing point of view. We have a lot of students from Brazil here. In Brazil, do you have a parliament? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. How many p official parties do you have? We have a lot. We have actually two, the, the left side and the, the right side. Okay. The position. So the party that's in power is called the governing party, correct? Yeah. All right. Does the other party tend to agree with that party very often? No. No. Their it job is... Ever, actually. <laughs> exactly. Well, they're supposed to provide an opposing point of view. It doesn't matter if they once agreed with that topic. Now that they're not in power, they're to oppose. That's their job. They're not always meant to agree. Sometimes they do. Okay, okay here's the fun part. Cross-examination. Okay, so remember a little while ago. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, let me go back. We were talking about the types of speeches in a debate. What was the first one we talked about? Constructive speeches. Constructive speeches. Now we come to the second one, cross-examination. It's almost what it sounds like. In a cross-examination, one debater asks a question of the opposition in order to gain information. So, Claudia, you're on Team Affirmative. Claudia, are you referring to all video games? Yes or no? You say in your resolution that video games contribute to youth violence. Are you referring to all video games? Who's Claudia? Oh, Camilla. sorry, Camilla. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Claudia, please answer me. Let's try that again. I'm welcome, Rick. So, um, Camilla, in your resolution, you state that video games contribute to youth violence. Are you referring to all video games? 
Actually, yes. Okay, thank you. So you're referring to all video games. All right, well, Claudia, I would like to bring up a study from Columbia University which shows that... Columbia again. Boom, there you go, right? So we cross-examination. Why? In order to gain additional information so that... Let me draw my... Get my green here. So that we can hang the other team. Trap <laughs> them. Now, Camilla sensed what I was trying to do here. <laughs> right? And if you've studied, you'll know what the other team is trying to do. So you'll be prepared. Okay? So keep in mind, cross-examination is your second type of speech, speech, right? It's your second type of speech. And you're really, you're just trying to get information. Now, I know Renee likes to get tips because I always tease him every now and then. Yeah. So, does anybody notice what I did when I asked Camilla a question? What kind of question did I ask her? You heard me ask her a question, and this is open to anybody. What do you think I was trying to do? Um, you were trying Try to... to mislead my speech, <laughs> in okay, my opinion. Good. good. And Elmer? They give you a proof of... Their opinion, uh, her opinion, sorry. Thank you, Elmer. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that you were trying to find any kind of inconsistencies on her theory, and then you could counterattack. Yes, that's partly true, too. I mean, that's one of my points, but have you ever heard somebody say, never ask a question you don't know the answer to? Yes, I do. Yeah, in a debate, that's true. Never ask a question if you don't know the answer. And never, ever, 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 ever. That's bad grammar, by the way, but it gets my <laughs> point across. Never ask a question unless they can give you just a yes or no answer. So when Camilla answered the question and says, no, but, I cut her off. I said, thank you. Because all I needed was the yes or no. All right? Right. So ask questions, this is important, that you already know the answer to. You want the audience to know the answer as well. You ever notice how lawyers do this? They ask questions, and you're watching the movie. You're thinking... Well, why is he asking that? He already knows that. Because he wants the jury to know that. Renee. Yes, sir. You're from Mexico, correct? I guess. Yes. You <laughs> guess. You don't know? <laughs> no, yes, I am. Thank you. So you, you live in Mexico. Uh, you live in a small town. Yes. You speak Spanish. Yes. Do you have a passport? No. Thank you, Renee. Oh. <laughs> okay, very good. Yes, no answers. I already knew the answers to most of those. This is very important. Don't let the opponent take over your yes or no questions. You have control, but once you ask your opponent a question, be prepared. You're now opening them up to be able to have a discussion with you. They might say things you don't want, so be prepared. Okay? So, again, ask leading questions. Ask questions that are called yes or no questions. And don't let your opponent take over. Okay? That's important. It's very important. It's very important. Maybe me and Renee will have a little example here shortly. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Some notes. In a court of law, 
trials often take the form of a debate. The complainant will usually take the role of the affirmative or the prosecution and the defense the role of the negative. No surprises there. What is a surprise is that this is actually a debate. The only time either the prosecution or the defense address the judge or jury is during the opening statements or the closing statements. Okay, These are through our constructive speeches that we talked about. The rest of the time they're asking yes or no questions to the opponent. So the negative is asking yes or no to the affirmative. The affirmative is asking yes or no to the negative. However, when the defense attorney gets up to talk to his own witnesses, he will ask more questions where they can give more information. Evidence is introduced through questioning and cross-examination of witnesses. Have you ever thought of a courtroom being a debate setting? Yes. Very good. You're very smart. It very much is. <laughs> so, rebuttals. This is our third form. Rebuttal speeches answer, provide answers to the constructive speeches. Traditionally, no new arguments are introduced here. Debaters may only respond to the arguments introduced in a constructive speech. They may use information presented in earlier speeches or gained in cross-examination. Not every debate uses all of these criteria in the same way. However, in all debates, there is some degree of construction and rebuttal. Some debates use a lot of cross-examination. Some don't use any at all. In most of my debate classes, students rarely try cross-examination. But I would like us to try that in the next few months. Rene, Juan Carlos. Has anybody ever watched a presidential debate? Yes. <laughs> They're great TV. Isn't it a lot of fun? Mm, kind of. <laughs> oh, so much fun. Well, are they really debates? No. No. Why not? Yes, they debate. Okay, so yes and no. Yes. The no. The president of the debate? No. No. They just control the the temperature of the debate. Who and controls? the rules of the debate. The president of the debate, no? No. Nope. No, the people debating aren't actually debating. Think. You, you already but know this, but here's what happens. When a debate is set up, usually the questions are prepared ahead of time. In most countries, the people attending don't know what the questions are. You usually have somebody facilitating. They'll ask each person the question. They then get to answer the question. And then they can have a chance to argue with each other. Yeah, a moderator. They don't debate each other. They're asked a series of questions. Okay. It is not a debate. These are what we call a forum. A forum is where parties ask questions, either by a moderator or an audience member. One party answers the question, and the opposing is allowed a response. Rules state that the speakers adhere to specific time limits, which they never pay, pay attention to. Renee, what is your view on um, gun legit? Uh, sorry, what is your view on making assault rifles illegal? Hmm, that's a good question. I think it's 
It is bad. But All right, thank you. Your time is up. Uh, Juan Carlos, <laughs> you have 10 seconds to refute or comment on what your opposing member has said. Did you say illegal or you. legal? Your time's up. <laughs> well, the point I'm saying is that's what these quote debates are. They're a forum. Moderator will ask one a question. He has a certain amount of time to speak. And then the other person has a, the equal amount of time to respond to what the other person has said. And the moderator will take turns asking each person a question. So I might start with Renee this time and then start with Juan Carlos next time. Okay. I'm done giving you guys a lecture right now. We'll go through this more on Thursday. So let's look at what our debate topic is for this week. We introduced it last week. And I want you guys to think as though you're on the affirmative. So we have our resolution. Video games. Contribute. To youth violence. I spelt it wrong again, but that's the problem that I write too fast. I'm a great typer, terrible writer. Okay, so we have, well, what's the subject of this resolution? Video games. I know, violence. Video games are violence? What is it? Well, what kind of violence is it? It's youth violence, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... I want everybody to participate here. Type out, please, if you don't want to yell out. What is the subject of this resolution? Youth violence. Yes. Okay. Is that good enough? Do we want to say youth? Do we want to define what this is? You're the affirmative. You can choose this to be the type of debate you want it to be. So what do you want to, do we want to say video games contribute to youth violence? Okay, so, well, teenagers, youth, it's kind of, do you want to specify an age range? Well, we can go anywhere well, from zero, zero to 123. Zero to... Youth? Youth are not I'm saying nobody's lived longer than 123 17. years of age, and we can't talk about people that aren't born yet, right? So... We Here are talking we have about youth. like 5 to 17, Okay, 18, so 5 like to that. 17, 18. What else? 10 to 14? 18 are actually adults. It, well, keep in mind, maybe this is in adults too. You have the ability here on the affirmative to define this so that the negative doesn't bring it up later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, maybe it contributes to violence with little kids, too. Maybe it is 5, starts at 5. Maybe it works all the way up to 35. What do you guys want to do? But 35 is still youth. No, it's not a youth anymore. Uh, uh, a youth is yeah, from just... almost childhood up to Teenagers. adulthood. So it can't go past oh, 18 like... or 19. Yeah, that's... Okay, Dario says 12 to 18. Juan Carlos says 10 to 14. I have 5 to 17. Let's take votes. The first one, 12 to 18, if you think that this is what it, the age group should be, please type... Yes, in the chat. Yeah, window. just in the ages. Please, one vote. Chat yet or type yes in the chat window. I'm not counting no votes. I'm just counting yes votes. Okay. 
Ten more seconds. Everyone's got to participate. Raphael, I see you've typed. Thank you. Octavio, you've got to type. Oh, unless, of course, it's not yes. Uh, Julio, Juan Carlos, Jessica, Eduardo, and everybody else in the lobby. Right now, we only have one vote for 12 to 18. So, number two, 10 to 14. Anybody think it should be 10 to 14? Uh, teacher, I think for me, affect everybody. But um, if I need to choose, I would choose the younger age. You know, because well, hold on a minute, because yeah. we're just we're just dealing with number two right now, ten to fourteen. So I only have one person on ten to fourteen. Okay, I choose the younger yeah, age. Uh, we haven't gotten to that one yet. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, Please I'm wait your turn. Five, five to five to seventeen, right? I uh, know, ten to fourteen. Okay. Yeah, 10 or 14, yeah. Okay, so 2 for 10 to 14. Okay, number 3, 5 to 17. 1, 2, 3, 4. Renee, you voted twice. <laughs> Sorry, Renee, I'm smarter than that. 1, 2, 3, <laughs> 4. So it's clear you guys want to do 5 to 17. Okay. So, here's I how vote for the three. Uh, that, that's nice. I'm glad to see you're voting. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Video games contribute to violence among youths aged 5 to 17. That's a little tighter, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, contribute, Zion, it, that's a very simple word. And let's go over that a little bit, because that offers us a bit of wiggle room. So contribute. Contribute means to help. Right? right? It simply means to help in its simplest form. Now, if we leave it as contribute, as we have here, well, to what level? No, I know what you're saying, and that's what I'm getting to. So, when we say it contributes to youth violence, so let's say youth violence in 1970 was, oh, let's say 11% of children aged 5 to 17 were involved in violent acts. We'd have to define what the, what, where we got that information from, but let's say 11%. But then in 1980, 10 years after video games had been out, that number had gone to 13%. Oh, this then in 2000, that number had jumped to 21% where games are far more violent and vicious. Please. We're showing a trend where it is going up. Now that's helped. Right? We didn't say Helps by what degree. Please. We're not specifying the level. We're not saying video games contributed to a 20% increase. We're giving you a bit of room here. It's kind of easy to say this. Because even a small amount, even 0.1 percent, is a contribution. However, if you're arguing, let's say research only shows that it's gone up by 2 percent. Is that a lot? Is anything going up 2% a lot? Juan Carlos. It's not significant. Uh, yes, it's significant. Why it is it significant? It depends on the size of the group. Ooh, it, is size not, of group. it is not significant, issue. 
Well, no. Depends on the scale of the group, because if it's a uh, 3 billion, it represents almost nothing, but if it's 200, it's a lot. So Camilla said something very, very important. She's quantified it. Quantified mean put it into a number. Depends on the size of your sample group. Okay, depends on your sample group. If you have a group of, where you looked at a study and they looked at a group of a thousand people, your margin of error could be 2% or 3%. However, if you had access to police databases yeah, that showed all uh, crimes in the United States from 1970 to 2000, well, now you're dealing with a size of about a population of 300 million. Yeah. That gives you a larger sample size, and this number might be more accurate now. Yeah, right. But uh, also, when, when you mention 2%, I, I, I see the other side, and I, and I see that there are 98% that there are no influence, you know, which is good. So, Edward, are you saying that 2% of the population is insignificant? Yeah, because I look at, I look at the other side, and I, and I see that 98%, 98% like I know influence, which is good. So, Edward, you you think that if a thou six thousand people a year die through violence by children, that's okay? It's acceptable. You're willing to see six thousand people a year die because of violence? That's okay. Fisher, you you, no, you say on. that, too. Edward. Edward, let's let's try this out for a little bit here. So. You've told me that 98%, hey, that's pretty good. 2% is not a big deal. But now I'm telling you that that 2% represents 6,000 deaths a year in just the U.S. alone. Are you saying that those 6,000 deaths don't matter? Yeah, but uh, you are Thank you, thank you, you are very looking. much. Thank you very much, Edward. Please so my friend. opponent Did here has said that 98% is a good number. And it doesn't matter if that results in 6,000 deaths a year. Now, it's a very cold, hard view. I believe that that 2,000, that 2% 2 makes a difference. 6,000 families at least are impacted because of video games. Yeah, Tisha, I think you are, you are looking the, the wrong point of view about the violin because it is not calculated this way. Nowadays, the United States have more than 2% of, of influence from games. Have more. And, My and, resolution, Edward, the resolution is video games contribute to youth violence among youth aged 5 to 17. We've agreed to yeah, that. But, uh, you, so yeah, but... Uh, uh, Edward, I have the floor. Please respect my time. Thank you very much. In a debate, it's rude to interrupt the other person. You don't do that. And they'll call you on it, too. Okay? So, we've agreed to the resolution. We've said that it's between youth age 5 to 17. We've agreed that the rate between, you know, let's look at a rate of 98%, that least 2% of the population that's affected by youth violence. 6,000 people, just because of video games alone. Video game is not something critical. We, we know that it's not all video games, it's just a small portion. If all we do is make one legislative change to reduce violence in video games, 6,000 people are not harmed. And when one person is harmed, at least six other people are affected. Mother, father, brother, sister, friends. At least six other people are affected. Times 6,000? That's 36,000 people a year that are affected because of video games. Mm -hmm. So if you think that's insignificant, I challenge you that it is not. <laughs> All I'm saying is, now I don't really care. We, we were just assuming it's 98% and 2%. The point is, be very careful with your numbers and where you get your evidence from. 
And most importantly, as Edward has learned, when you are speaking, let the other person have their time. If you disagree, write it down. If you don't like the way they're calculating, well, when it's your turn to speak, ask them, well, how did you calculate this? Where did you get your information? Well, I got my information from Columbia University. Ah, well, wasn't it true in 2000 that Professor Blah 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 from Columbia University used an incorrect statistical measurement for his data? Right? You can always call a person on it, but do it in a respectful way. So, I was just giving you an example. But notice how I took something and made it emotional. Right, Edward? I took something like a number, he said it's insignificant, then I put real people up against that number. Edward could have said, yes, I understand that there is some violence attributed to this, but the video game industry is worth $16 billion and provides jobs for X number of people. It also provides a lot of good. It provides income. It puts food on people's tables. He could take an emotional aspect of it, too. Edward, it's just an example. I'm not trying to debate whether it's 2%, 8%. It, it doesn't matter. All I'm saying is when you come to your debate, be prepared. Do your research. So on Thursday... We're going to come to class prepared. We're going to look at our resolution. Video games contribute to violence among youths aged 5 to 17. What I suggest is research both the affirmative and the negative. Look at Wikipedia. Look at various universities. Look at newspapers. Get facts. You might very well both argue, the affirmative and the negative might both have a great argument, it might be a tie. The purpose is here to learn. Learn a bit about debate, but most importantly, it's to practice your English. And debate is an effective way of doing that. Look at how emotional Edward got. He probably forgot he was speaking English. And that's what happens with debate. You get so wrapped up in what you're doing, you're thinking in English, you're speaking, you're listening, you're writing. It'll really help you with your English. Any questions? No. Nope. Any? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. Camilla, you, I think you had a question? No, I said no. You asked oh. any question, I said no. <laughs> Edward, any questions? You're quiet now. I just I want to start the debate. You have the floor. <laughs> OK. OK. Uh, well, Zion, this is actually. Um, an English class, so if you don't need help with your English, um, <laughs> not sure why you'd want to come here. I mean, the debate is fun, but there's much better debate forums out there than what we do here. My main purpose around this class is really to help students with their English, and debate is one of those methods that I use. It's generally more for intermediate or advanced speakers. Renee, you've been very quiet. Any questions? Well, I have a question, but it's uh, since the beginning. <laughs> Go ahead. Always, always the, the topic of the debate, it is always with the affirmative. It is always benefits the affirmative, or the, it, if, if the debate topic is in a negative way, now it's the control is in the negative. So with this top resolution here, who do you think has the benefit? The affirmative. And, and some would argue that that can be the case because the, the affirmative sets the tone. So let's look at it from a negative point of view. 
So the affirmative says they contribute. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, maybe it does contribute to violence in some way. They may have evidence for that. But what kind of violence are we talking about? Are we talking murder? Right? Really? Murder? Find out factors that might indicate this. How many five-year-olds are killing their brother? No. Right? So you can look to that. Also, contribute to youth violence. Well, what things do youths do, for example, in their spare time? They ride bikes. They drive. They socialize. Games, like board games, video games. So, Renee, yes. do bikes contribute to youth violence? Do does driving contribute to youth violence? Do social do socializing activities contribute to youth violence? Before we had video games, did we have youth violence? Yeah. Yeah, we did. So we don't play board games nearly as much. We now play video games. When we played board games, did we ever have fights? Yeah. 